The probably best known gene in the field of nutrigenetics is the gene MTHFR. And uh, this is what happens. So folic acid is a quite common nutritional supplement. It's also fortified in foods because generally the general public agrees it's important you have enough uh, folic acid, especially during pregnancy. Uh, I think almost every woman who is pregnant is, is supplementing with folic acid. So it is an important molecule that has a lot of healthy functions. The problem is that folic acid itself is not active in the body. So if I eat it through supplements or nutrients uh, or fortified foods, it's still inactive in our body. But that's not a problem because there's a gene called the MTHFR gene, which has the function to convert the inactive folic acid to the active form called 5-MTHF. So uh, folic acid needs a gene to be converted to be healthy. Now, some people um, do have two mutated versions of this gene, and you can see this number here. So it's 9% of the population uh, have very ineffective versions of this gene. So what happens is they, they uh, ingest folic acid, it remains inactive, it cannot be activated, and uh, folic acid uh, remains without effect. So what can you do if you have this genetic variation? Folic acid obviously is not the solution. However, there's the active form that you can already supplement with. Um, certain fruits have it, but it's quite unstable when you cook it. So um, supplementation is a, um, is a quite effective way of how to make sure you do get enough of this. So if you already supplement with the active form, you still get the health effect. So depending on your status of the MTH of our gene, uh, there are different recommendations of what nutrients uh, or what supplementation you should be following. Now, I do need to talk about science a little bit so you know it exists. Um, so this has been studied quite well. So in 2014, there was a meta-study, so one study that consists of many different studies that studied 227,000 people, and they found the following. If you have a mutated MTHFR gene, so a broken MTHFR gene, Folic acid remains inactive, and this leads to folate deficiency, or at least a very high likelihood of folate deficiency. And this has been shown in this meta study. Um, Clerk has shown the same in 23,000 people, Holmes in 60,000 people, Casas in 13,000 people, and so on. And uh, last time I checked, I found 297 peer reviewed studies on PubMed all independent studies that have looked at uh, in total more than 300,000 subjects and have shown this link. So if you have a mutated gene, folic acid is not going to work and you're likely to be folate deficient. Um, then you might ask for the gold standard in studies and that uh, for, for uh, supplements is a placebo controlled study. Um, essentially what, what happens is you either get the nutrient or you get a tic-tac, uh, so and something that doesn't contain it, and then you look at the difference. So uh, this makes sure you don't have any bias by the, by the scientist that is doing this. And uh, in 2018, a quite big study of 2,300 people was, uh, was published that showed that um, if you have normal versions of the MTHFR gene, folic acid can be converted. Also, the 5-MTHF is functional, of course, because folic acid is converted into it. And vitamin B2 doesn't have any effect on folate metabolism. However, if you have the genetic mutation for the genetic variation, folic acid uh, is not functional. So you need to supplement with the active form and suddenly vitamin B2 is also beneficial. So quite interesting what they have shown. And then Wilson has shown the same in a placebo study, McNulty has shown it, and so on. In total, we have 11 placebo studies on PubMed, studying more than 6,300 different subjects. So this was one gene, and I think I, I could show that there is, uh, people do react differently to folic acid, and choosing the right type of folate is dependent on the function of the MTHFR gene, which we can detect through a genetic test. Another good